G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Lockwood 300. This is a weapon that has been ported from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2022, based on a real-life firearm called the Browning Satori. Specifically, this one is a 7.25 variant. You can tell from its gold-plated trigger there. It always isn't that fancy. And despite this thing being of Browning design, this thing is actually made in Japan. They got a um, factory over in Japan. They produced these things. It was developed around the uh, early 1970s, so it goes back a little bit, but it must be pretty reliable if they're still using it today and what do they use it for skeet shooting it's a sports rifle shotgun thing so you'll find it and you go you shoot clay targets with it it's got a long barrel so they'll help you tighten your spread so you can get a nice even uh, shot at a pretty long range as a weapon of war this is not a combat shotgun so we're going to be taking it pretty easy today in terms of how many enemies we fight because well we're gonna reload after every two shots because it's a double barrel shotgun ovary undery style instead of the side by side that you see with the vanilla game shotgun this weapon is craftable and a chemistry workbench either through just random miscomponents that you'll find everywhere or you can actually turn a standard vanilla game double barrel shotgun into this on the chemistry workbench i'll show you that a little bit later chambered in the standard vanilla game shells and you can change the flavor of what the shells will be shooting but it won't actually change the actual shells this thing will be firing it'll be firing the standard vanilla game shells custom sounds and animations are obviously here because they need to be it's just a standard with call of duty ports let's get into the attachments first of all legendary effect provided by legendary modification skip Next up, you can change the handguard, including one here that has Picatinny rails. And if you're wondering whether you can throw grips under that, you can. So we're going to do that. This is going to be a full tactical cursed Lockwood 300. Now, if we go over to the barrels here, the longest barrel we can have is this one. It gives us 119 range, a little bit of extra accuracy. And this trigger system, it can replace with a Maelstrom dual trigger. Basically, this makes you fire both shots at once, or rather, um, it fires the two shots in a very quick succession to maybe increase your DPS. There's ways to subvert that. You can get around that by firing it in third person. It'll just fire the one shot. Or if you fire this thing in bats, it'll just fire the standard one at a time. But we'll go for this one. It requires gun nut rank 2 and a couple of components to put that together, but... We'll throw that on for this one. And now we'll go over to the chokes, which you can't see at the moment because the barrel is too damn long. But some of these will increase your range and accuracy, which is nice. There's also options for suppressors down here, which will increase your damage thanks to uh, that would be Ace Operator. This one actually increases your range as well. So why not? Who doesn't like to avoid going deaf while shooting at things? Now, we can continue this uh, barrel rib all the way back to the back of this thing or you could replace that rib with a picatinny rail and on that picatinny rail you get the options of throwing on optics reflex sights there might even be some uh scopes here although that's probably a little bit too much this one a 6.3 times scope now you can attach or chamber this thing in slugs to make use of that scope but that's uh, quite an interesting thing you'd think this thing over time would be hard to keep aligned considering it's a breech loading shotgun and you've got to move that apart around all the time but what can you do, eh? Let's go for something a little bit more subtle, like this one. No, not that one. That one's too big. That one. That's nice and subtle. And you can throw a laser mount just in front of the handguard there, and that would allow you to attach lasers on, including one milliwatt in blue, red, or green. Uh, there's also options of uh, attaching flashlights. So this which is a much more... Uh, logical choice for a shotgun if you want to fight in a very dark place and using a shotgun you got to be up close anyway this one is a seven milliwatt one or so is in red so we'll go for that one hopefully this thing is going to be good for sustaining good hip fire accuracy and now we can go on to the different flavors of shots so buck shots there we've got dragon's breath explosive which is really cool we've also got slug as well so if you want to make this thing fire one giant round and you can have a scope on it as well. You can do a little bit of sniping with a shotgun. We've got the explosives loaded in this thing doing 337 damage, which is not too bad, to be honest. And you can throw stocks on this. I realize now that you can't actually see what these stocks look like, but there you go. You can also completely saw this stock off, which I saw a video of this thing in Call of Duty. Decided to do a little bit of research because it's the weekend. I got time to mess around and watch YouTube a little bit, and I'm pretty sure the guy that I was watching was on Adderall, but he did a pretty good job, and I noticed that basically this thing would one-shot anything out to a range that would be you know, permissible for a double barrel shotgun to actually one shot out of things. Now, we're not going to get that effect here. It's going to be a little bit bullet spongy, but 
Um, it's interesting to see how they adjust the uh, damage numbers on a shotgun in that game to make it actually work, despite it not being a very practical choice. But looks like that hasn't that logic hasn't been followed here. But still, we've got the receivers. We can pump that all the way up to advance, and we're getting ourselves a much more respectable. 524. Perhaps I spoke too soon and there'll be egg on my face as this thing is going to crush everything in its path, but well, we can hope. You can also increase your reload speed by uh, installing the slate of hand thing for gun nut rank 2. You gotta know your guns a little bit before you start reloading them properly. Nothing to do with manual dexterity at all. You could have one agility and reload it as fast. Alright, so there's one of our Lockwood 300s. I'll show you how to make them. Scroll down, find weapon, Lockwood 300, and you can craft it. Like I mentioned before, you can eat a double barrel shotgun and turn it straight into a Lockwood 300. Or, you can do this with these components, and no ranks of gun nut are required, which I think is odd, but what can you do, eh? Welcome back, Red Immersive Gunners Plaza, and here is our Lockwood 300 in first person. Okay, hit by accuracy. This is the explosive variant. It's not hit scan, but uh, it's a close range weapon anyway, so perhaps the uh, velocity on the projectiles won't matter quite as much. It seems accurate enough for what it is, so I'm sure it'll be just fine. Here is the slug version that I made, complete with that 6.3 times scope, which just looking at it at the moment, I don't think that's 6.3, but you know, we don't need a super long range scope for a, a shotgun, it's fine, don't worry about it. This one here has been sawn off, and the stock also been sawn off, with the foregrip on the bottom, and incendiary rounds. Look at the spread on that thing. And last of all, this one, with tactical reload, that's that applies with all of them, That's this is just standard buckshot. This one's as uh, close as I could get it to just the standard stock gun and its looks and everything as I could. So uh, we'll start off this with, and this is a mad idea, but we're going to try it anyway. I'm going to start off with a little bit of sniping. What is it? Oh, the slugs are hit scan. Isn't that great? And I suppose, why not just uh, smash that a little bit? We've got all of this... Uh, Hitting power, I suppose, like all of this VAT stuff, like past the fourth shot, it's an automatic critical. So we can use this just to whittle the enemies down. And now we're getting one shot kills on these guys. Don't have to worry about the reload so much when we're using VATs like this. Very nice. So if we thin out the herd as much as possible here, it'll be much easier for us going forward. Although we weren't able to secure kills on all of the targets there, we can go again. Because why not use VATs for everything? Now that we've got everything lined up, hopefully that guy there doesn't come close enough to detect me. Though that's fine, that turret gets obliterated. Alright, so far so good. The sniping with the shotgun seems to be a pretty effective solution. Now, this has got a pretty good rate of fire, but I'm not able to take advantage of that due to the fact that this scope is just going to get launched up as soon as I actually fire the weapon. i got to say, though, I'm enjoying this scope. As far as see-through scopes go, I think this is probably one of the best I've ever used, so isn't that nice? Anyways, let's bring out the explosive one now, which I believe... I believe we're looking at um, 12G frags here, and not like a standard legendary explosive shotgun. Now this one has the the double shooty trigger, so uh, if we actually get our aims on target, then we're probably going to have a pretty good time with this. Like I said before, it's cancelable semi-auto fire <laughs> um, in third person, should you want it to be like that. Now, this thing's got... Like, Pretty good hit by accuracy, so is there any reason why you'd want to um, use this thing aiming down sights when you've got really good hit by accuracy like you see right now? Probably. I gotta say though, the explosive power is, I feel like it's not doing as much as the uh, things letting on. Also, if I, am I shooting two projectiles if I skip the first shot and then can I technically fire three from this? Because it sounds like, and if you saying, if you listen closely, it does sound like we're firing two, even if we have one of them loaded. Anyways, enough of that. Let's go up close and use incendiary. 
Now this one, by design, it's short barrel, no stock. It should be fairly efficient in bats, which is not, it's not going to kill them as fast as you probably want. But you'll find that it's easier to generate the bats criticals, which means you can get a hell of a lot of damage out of this thing if you decide to bats in close range, which I think is pretty nice. But we're going to have to be using this thing at a, such a close range that it's going to be, well, it's a shotgun, but you know, you get the idea. A little bit of medium range power is it the worst you can do with a shotgun? That's a critical on that gunner's face. See, the good thing about the bullet time you bats is that you just line up your shots, make it work for you. But all of the, they're not glaring problems, but all of the issues that I thought I'd have with this shotgun have been confirmed. But you don't have to be a genius to figure out, hey, this muzzle-loading two-shot shotgun is not going to be amazing against a gigantic horde of gunner commandos now, do ya? But, for what it's worth, we are making it work pretty well, and it looks like we're just about to hit nerd rage, so um, using this thing slug rounds, we might be able to do a... No, not a nerd rage yet. Drop the gun a little bit there. I'm just going to go over here now. Maybe don't take them on so close. And here is the fruits of that critical that I got a little bit earlier, or the, the bat shooting that I was doing a little bit earlier, because, yeah, that guy was already partly injured by the time he ran around the corner, which I think is nice. Maybe I could uh, slip back into caution. Did I just see something pop behind there? Uh, I'm, I'm sure I, I saw something, all right. Oh yeah, it's just a big horner. Yeah, I thought it'd be something big like that, but I knew it was something. All right. How do we want to play this? Here's what we're going to do. I think that's Nerd Rage at this stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta say, I was expecting a little bit more out of our um, explosive shooting shotgun, but I think we've hit Nerd Rage, so... May as well take advantage of a couple of shots here. Thought we were going to shoot at the guy who was already missing a head in that there for a second, but no. The game fixed itself, just had to go through a reload first. You're almost dead. Maybe a bit of a waste of a critical there. Another partly injured gunner, easy pickings. And now, I'm just sort of using this shotgun at a range, which, you know... You're watching the Call of Duty gameplay, apart from, like, seeing just how much it appeals to people with, like, attention span issues, because you pull out your phone every two seconds after you get a kill to watch, a, I don't know, a few TikToks or something to activate a kill streak. But, um, just seeing the, just the range that you'd be able to kill people with this thing, it's like it's using the slug rounds in this mod, you know? So, you get a lot of power out of the, the extra range is so helpful as well. So, it'd be nice to see some of that um, longer range sort of thing reflected in this mod. Because at the moment, it's, it's, it's feeling like a more powerful, stronger version of the vanilla game shotgun. Granted, it's a very polished and well-made version of that. But, um, it could be doing a slightly different world to what we're seeing vanilla game vanilla guns already do in this game. Yes. Yeah, she's channeling the anger I feel. Okay, I think we're fine now. We've got a cheeky little level up there, and I thought that person was alive for a second. So even what if I miss with the explosive rounds, or maybe I should have. Maybe I just hit both of his legs on that occasion, but... Very, uh underwhelming I must say. Also for some reason, I've noticed this lately but I'm going to point it out now, is that for some reason the reload foley is like as loud as the gun itself. Like come on. Get away from me. He's actually picked the uh, right knife for this gunfight because I can't get too close to him. He blocked it. Well that works. How about we generate some criticals from your face? Yeah, that works. And we'll use the incendiary one now. 
perfect. This guy's gonna take like a billion shots to kill. As far as the game's concerned, we're hitting. And before you know it, we've got full vats. Full vats criticals. That was the gun, and that definitely wasn't Ricochet doing that for a little bit of damage from nowhere. Alrighty, so, um, it did it. A double barrel shotgun, um, passed the immersive gunner's plaza, which normally shotguns don't do that, so maybe this thing isn't a sweet spot where it's, uh, powerful enough to, um, take on a high-level sort of game mode. But, I, again, I did usually, I did, like, smash out criticals with the slug rounds and vats a little bit. So maybe that helped me a little bit, but, um, yeah, it's very... It's a, it's a powerful shotgun, but I think if it could, like, fill a niche of, like, a very long-range shotgun, which it could do good damage, but, you know, who knows? Maybe this mod will be changed, but it might be set in stone how it is. But that might be an interesting um, idea for any other modders out there. Like, because you got single shotguns in Fallout New Vegas, and they did okay, but imagine, like, a really big caliber one, which was designed to be used at a range, and... Sort of a scatter gun that could actually reach out and kill people at a medium range. We don't get that from mods yet, so maybe one day. Alright, there's the swan over there. Just got Achilles friend that lives in this shack. Well, that's one hit. I don't think it's dead though. Did I kill it? Did he run out the back? Oh, I, I killed it. Okay. I didn't even notice XP roll in. Anyway, so we've got a decent amount of shots at him to start off with, but we're going to have to give this a little bit of uh, VATS treatment in order for this to work. I probably could have stuck a little bit closer to make this work even further. But apparently he's just keen on standing there, which is cool. Okay, now, at this point... Oh, I've got the Brotherhood of Steel coming in. Well, they're not going to last long. He's going to throw rocks at them and they're going to die. Painful, horrible death. Alright. Oh, okay. Now we're in danger. Well, that was good while it lasted. I suppose, though, it'll be a good distraction, maybe. They are opening fire, but who even knows how much damage they're going to be doing to him. Okay. Let's try to use a full VATS round of explosives just to see how that goes in comparison. Now, granted, we are not getting the sneak criticals that would have made the slugs do really well. Like how you can see the explosive uh, slug go through the air there. I think I just hit the boulder as it was hitting me. Classic. Thanks, Todd. So what, we're not doing too bad in this DPS war. Granted, honestly, they're not even making these health budge. I'm, I'm just sitting at a spot where I can take all these cheap pot shots and he's got no chance of uh, dumping his gigantic anchor on me. He comes out rock. Well, that's just weird. I think, now, obviously, Fallout 4 and the creation engine is a simulation, but I... I'd like to think that it was actually the shockwaves of those explosive projectiles that was causing that rock to move erratically through the air. Little, there's little bits that you find out about um, Fallout 4 every now and then just to make you wonder, wow, that's interesting, or why they would do that. So this might go down in history as one of the most cheapest kills, but I should probably get out of the way of these rock slinging because at some point I'll be knocked down into nerd rage again. Although I've got a full AP bar at this point, so maybe, just maybe, we'll be okay. Also, he's a little bit off. The Brotherhood Bros are here. Great. Well, I'm going to use this as much as possible, then I'm going to stand behind him. A little bit of a delayed onset nerd rage there. Protect me, Squire! Protect. It's working! For victory indeed. Alright, mission accomplished. And I kept all the brother to steal people alive. That's the power of standing there and tanking constant boulder hits. Unless they want to go pick a fight with something else. What is it? There's a ghoul down there. No, it's a very, uh, lost rust devil. I think... Okay, I don't even know what he was doing here, but you know what? 
this explosive that ain't doing it for me, so I'll be right back. Okay, time to light up the night, but not with this one, with this one. Oh yeah. Explosive legendary effect double tapping and stuff. And who's that over there? A Raider Scabber? Not on my watch. Yeah, okay, this is only small fish, but um, you get cool lighting effects if you use explosive ones. Or spray the walls. Yay. It's not nearly as obnoxious as they made it in Fallout 76. That they made it annoying to hear, to listen to. Quit throwing grenades at me, mate. See, the good thing about playing Fallout 4 is um, you don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about latency, latency and stuff. So everything feels good. And never mind. I won't get into that discussion now. But so far, so good. Explosive shotgun. I used to main an explosive double barrel shotgun back on the PS4 days. I don't know, combat shotgun made things a little bit too easy, so I decided to attack a Milet Queen with a rolling pin. No. I decided to use the double barrel shotgun for like style. So I flogged that weapon a lot in the PS4 days, but of course, once you go over to PC and you start experimenting with mod guns or the vanilla. Ensemble becomes uh, pretty boring by comparison. Anyways, here's a bunch of explosive shots going to this guy's face. Look at that. Glorious. Back fail, cow beast. Okay. For a bad time, we'll try to get his part all messed up. The only problem I might have is uh, him hitting me and or me hitting myself because he's running so cl close to me I might you know, nick myself with the explosive damage so gotta keep weary of that in fact I shouldn't stay for too long in that so everything's in slow motion or at least he is compared to real time where reloading like the, the flash would reload if he would have used firearms which he doesn't have to because he could probably outrun the ball anyway and just punch people whoa roll Keep rolling. It's the Limp Biscuit song. Just gonna combat dodge. Hello, welcome to Dark Souls. There we go. You can't de defeat the boss normally. Just roll and flip all the time. All right, I should be safe in the water. Yes. Okay. I kind of got distracted by Mr. Lobster, but that's okay. Actually, uh, misplayed there. I could have done a little bit better. I could have gotten myself a little bit of um. A little bit of extra gun through damage from that crab thing. Is that the Brotherhood again? They're just uh, flying everywhere. I don't think they're going to be lasting against those super mutants that live uh, at that satellite array, though. No, no, no. Look at the accuracy on this thing. This thing's far more consistent. Although it's a gigantic mile arc target, so how could you miss, right? I've already demonstrated that you can miss with this thing, but not that. Not the computers. They know what they're doing. Alright, things are a little bit, um... Dire here. I'm hoping for a critical. That's not going to be enough. Quickly, combat roll in slow motion. Still not enough. Still not enough. Dodge, please. There we go. All, the, all of the dodge timing is messed up when it's in slow motion. Ah! Okay. Alright. Alright. We're good. We're good. We're good. How much health did I have left? 41. Well, we did it. Um... A bit of a close fight on both occasions, but it got over the line, so I guess that's a pass in terms of damage. So, I don't know whether this thing requires a buff or anything, because it got through, and, you know, despite being a double-barreled shotgun and all of those uh, glaring flaws, I've actually done a pretty good job at um, killing everything. So, who knows, maybe this thing is well-balanced as it is, and I should stop watching Call of Duty gameplay to give me unrealistic expectations about the weapon ports that I'm about to use. Who knows? Anyways, so that's the Lockwood 300. Uh, worth checking out if you're interested. Uh, basically, or I could say that the same about 
all COD ports. But this one is um, good. It's got a little bit of style for the double barrel shotguns. It's nice. You can wear it as well. It's a good apparel item. So the fashionist is out there. You'll be right at home with using this thing. But yeah, worth having a look if you're interested. Check out the links in the description should be down there. Also, um, the... Kira, Carla, and Vicky follower mods on Xbox and PC have been updated. They've had a bit of a facelift. Um, this hair is from a different hair mod, though. So, Vicky won't look like that. But she's got the, like, the Panam Palmer hair. A little bit about that going on here. And I think that suits her pretty well. But anyways, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.